No, I don't waste no time. Hi there guys and welcome to a new video. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketing online coach. And in this video, I want to be going over 10 tactics that you can immediately implement to get you up to 10,000 a month quickly. Now, quick disclaimer before we actually start this video, not all of the tactics that I'm going to explain to you right now are tactics that I'm currently using within my own agency. Reason being is because obviously we have surpassed the 10K a month mark about two years ago right now, and we are in a different stage of the agency where we can implement different types of tactics to basically augment what we are currently doing. So when you are going from zero to 10K, I advise you to actually go for different tactics and different strategies than the ones that will get you from 10K to 30K or from 30K to 50K. Why? Because at that point in time, you have much more cash flow that you can play around with and you can start setting up systems that will allow you to work on the business rather than in the business, even though I do hate um, that phrase because I do feel like a lot of the gurus out there um, basically portray that strategy in such a way that people think that what they need to do right away is outsource everything and that they can't be doing any physical work within the business because like I said, that'll obviously be going against what all these gurus are trying to tell you. So without rounding on too much, tactic number one, basically what I would recommend in a situation where you are starting from zero and you have basically you know no clientele, um, no one that you're doing outreach to and you want to get started right away is to make as many connections as possible. So what I mean by that is reach out to as many business owners as you possibly can, build up relationships with as many business owners as you can and just take as many calls as you can. Not everyone will be a right fit, not everyone will be a client uh, for your agency after a call, but the great thing about doing this is that, first of all, you'll be doing much more than the average agency owner, because despite the fact what you see on Instagram and social media, not everyone is putting in as much work as you think. So if you actually do put in as much work as you think your competitors are doing, you will actually be surpassing them in terms of workloads and you know, you'll be surpassing them in terms of the speed in which you get calls booked. Sometimes you don't have to be fancy, you don't have to be um, you know, having all these bells and whistles in your funnels, which we'll be getting into in just a second as well. Sometimes you just need to do the work. And one of the biggest income producing activities are basically building up relationships. And what you'll realize is as well, not everyone will be a right fit for your agency, but they might know people that are. So yes, you might be taking a call with someone that has a startup and someone that needs, I don't know, email marketing rather than Facebook ads, but that person will also have a network of people that he can refer on to you, which again is something that we'll be getting into later in this video. Okay, so make as many connections as possible. The more people know what you are doing, the higher the likelihood of you landing a client, okay? So tactic number two is to pick a niche and run with it. Especially when starting out, you will see a lot of people, or I should rephrase that, a lot of people that are just starting out will have the phrase on their social media, we help businesses scale to six and seven figures. That is the basically the, the, the surefire way of knowing that that client or that agency has no clients, no business, and has just started their journey. Once you pick a niche, you'll be able to separate yourself from the rest. You'll be able to separate yourself from those that are just the generic agencies. And yes, before I do get that comment, I know I have something very, very similar in my cover photo on Facebook and on LinkedIn and Twitter, but all of the funnels that we are directing traffic to, whether that is organic or paid, say something completely different and are obviously very much tailored towards the niche that we are focusing on, which is meal delivery and meal prep. So what we actually say in those other funnels is we help meal delivery services and meal prep companies 
on Shopify, you're doing around 30K a month scale to 50, 60K a month because we know that that is the niche that we can help. And by being that specific, we know that clients in that bracket will be very much tempted to take us up on the offer or at least see what we have to say. What we do when we take calls with potential clients is we actually ask them, why did you take this call with us today? And nine, well, as 99% of the time, so more than nine out of 10, will say the reason why is because you guys tailor specifically towards meal prep and meal delivery and all of the other emails and, and messages that, are, that we are getting are from agencies that help e-com stores scale, which is so broad and so generic that it doesn't appeal to anyone, okay? So you don't have to be married to that niche, by the way, you guys don't need to stay within that niche and once you decide on a niche, that you know, it doesn't mean that you can never pick out a different niche or a different industry, but when starting out, just pick one niche, tailor everything around that, and then go all in on that niche, okay? Speaking of niches, what I also recommend you guys do is build a strong network within online marketing or even within marketing in general. If you have other types of agencies within your network, you can actually build up relationships with those agencies or with those people, with those owners, so that they can refer business onto you. A lot of agencies out there will actually not offer Facebook ads, but will offer something else. So if you are offering Facebook ads, you can actually create a collaboration with those people and say, listen, um, you know, let's say for example, it's a, it's a, it's a content creation uh, agency, then you can say, listen, every client that I have for Facebook ads that needs content uh, creation, I will refer to you if you guys do the same with me. So if a content creation client for that content creation agency actually wants Facebook ads to see how the content is, will do in terms of paid traffic, then that agency can refer them on to you. You guys will realize very quickly how easy it is to get clients through word of mouth in that way once you set up collaborations like that. So go out in your network or build a network of email marketers, Google ad agencies, content creation agencies, TikTok agencies, and so on and so forth in, in the situation where you're offering Facebook ads and then say, listen, let's work together. Let's, you know, refer business onto each other. Okay, and then speaking of content creation, that is another thing that I recommend you guys do. I can't put into words how much my personal brand has helped me with my agency. And what we actually do is we push my YouTube content, especially the Facebook ads content, towards potential clients so that number one, they obviously get valuable content, information that they can use themselves, but more often than not, they will quickly realize how much work actually goes into it, and then they'll rather just pass it on to us because we've already got that top of mind awareness by passing on that video to them, and they would basically want it you know, done by a professional, and that's when they come to us. The personal brand has definitely helped me with my agency because people see that what I'm doing, people see that I'm doing well, I'm constantly posting results of clients um, you know, that we have and that we're running Facebook ads for, and you know, people just start referring business onto me, but also people are seeing what I'm doing and they want me to do that for their business as well. So when you are starting out, start creating content around your agency, and what you'll realize very quickly is that you'll build up that authority position and you will also outshine those that are just sending out those generic emails, um, you know, those email blasts saying, hey, first name, we help, businesses scale with Facebook ads, uh, click here to book a call. If you have content, they will see obviously a face of the name, you'll build on the top of mind awareness and you will also very quickly create an authority position within your niche. Then tip number five or tactic number five, I should say, and that is to step away from what everyone else is offering. I've already touched upon it uh, in tactic number two where I said pick a niche, but when you're looking at niches and when you're looking at offers, it's very tempting to go for female fashion, Shopify stores, e-commerce, and offer Facebook ads. 
but there's so many different types of offers that you can offer and you'll notice that if you do actually step away from what everyone else is doing, it'll be much easier to get clients, it'll be much easier to get calls booked and you'll have less competition. Once we actually started doing meal prep and meal delivery, it was like a blue ocean. No one else was offering that, no one else was getting results within that niche and we just started to dominate. Obviously now, because people have seen the success that we are getting within meal prep and meal delivery, there's been a few little competitors pop up here and there that have a very similar funnel, uh, you know, almost looks copied, which obviously, you know, I won't be uh, commenting on any further, but you know, when we were just starting out, it was very easy to scale quickly within that niche because it wasn't what everyone else was offering. Even though we are still offering Facebook ads, which is the most um, used or most you know, offered service, um, because we were doing that to a niche that wasn't necessarily getting pitched as much, it worked. So what you could actually do is if you do wanna go for female fashion, you could actually offer email marketing to female fashion stores. You could offer content creation or TikTok, um, TikTok ads to female fashion stores. Uh, you know, there's so many other offers out there. There's, there's Bing ads, there's Pinterest ads, there's Twitter ads, there's even LinkedIn ads. There's so many different types of offers. Don't necessarily just go for Facebook ads for e-com stores, female, you know, Shopify brands, because that is what everyone else is doing. So it's gonna be very crowded and it's gonna be very difficult to separate yourself from the rest. Then tactic number six, which is something that has very, very much helped me and I think often gets overlooked as well. And that's building a network of like-minded people. So what you could do if you are just starting out is find three to five people, either in your own country or some, you know, people that you can reach out to and connect with that are on a similar wavelength as you. So that are also into digital marketing, have around the same income as you at the moment and are you know in the same process or the same phase of their agency as you are. Why? Because by brainstorming with people that are on the same, you know, on the, in the same phase as you, you will quickly realize how easy it is to come up with new ideas, to brainstorm new ideas, and you will also realize that they have the same pitfalls as you. So you guys can work out things that are not working and you know, quickly figure out why it's not working and basically come up with solutions for that. Then pick out three to five people that are just one or two steps ahead of you because you can learn from them. They are further along than you, but not that far where you know they see no need to help you because they're that far ahead. It's like comparing you know, someone's chapter 10 to someone's chapter one. But if you're on chapter one and they're on chapter two, then they know what it's like to be at chapter one. So they'll be willing to help you and you can obviously benefit from them because they are already in chapter two. Then speaking of chapter one and chapter two, also pick out three to five people that are one step behind you because there's something about teaching people that are one step behind you that sort of consolidates what you are doing and by teaching it to those people, you will solidify what you already know. And it's the same when you are studying for a test in uni, etc. Once you start presenting it or teaching it to others, it, it almost just gets printed into your brain and you'll not forget what it is that you are teaching. I noticed the same thing as well. When I, I've become a better media buyer by teaching other people to media buy because they will give me questions or they will you know, ask for advice and I'll teach them my solutions and my answers. And by doing that, it's you know, solidified in my brain. And you know, from that point onwards, I don't even need to research it. I just know it by heart. The amount of times people have asked me to verify a domain or to, to you know, set up a specific type of campaign that now I don't even need to look at the business manager. I can just say, okay, click here, go to business settings, do that, do this, the other. And by teaching that to others, I've become a better media buyer. So by having those three to five people that are fairer than you, that are in the same position as you, and that are a few steps behind you, you can almost create this mastermind effect where everyone can learn from each other and you'll notice that that'll push the needle much quicker than you trying to do everything as a lone wolf. Then tip number seven is to go the extra mile. As I already mentioned, not everyone is putting in that much work as you think that they are doing by looking at their Instagram story, their highlights, etc. okay? People are not putting in that much work. So if you actually do that, you will separate yourself from the rest. And the same goes for when you are working with clients. 
not everyone is going the extra mile. Everyone is doing the bare minimum. So if you do just that little bit more than the bare minimum, you will be able to separate yourself from the rest. So when you are offering Facebook ads and you notice that traffic is dropping off at a certain point in their funnel, on their website or in the, you know on their store, then help them fix it, figure out ways to fix it. Um, you know, offer CRO for free just to get you know, those positive, um, you know, testimonials and just to get better as an overall marketer. And by going the extra mile, when you are starting out, you will really benefit from that later on in your journey. Because obviously when you're at 20, 30K a month, I don't recommend you guys, you know, personally diving in and, you know, offering a CRO audit to your clients. But by knowing how to do that and by having done that in the past, you'll be able to use that advice and that knowledge to consult your clients and to also find people that can actually do that and you know provide a good job for your clients. Okay, then tactic number eight is start delegating where you can. Whether or not you are just starting out or you know you're already generating 20, 30K a month with your agency, I highly recommend you guys not do what a robot can do. And the most simple mundane things that you are doing on a daily basis can actually be outsourced or delegated or automated in some capacity. So when you look at your day-to-day -day routine and your day-to-day -day tasks, already start thinking about how you can actually you know, automate or delegate that so that when the time comes, you don't need to start creating processes and creating systems because you sort of already have a backlog of systems and, and processes that you can then start automating. Then tactic number nine, which will be quite controversial probably for a lot of people that have been in and around the marketing space, is to forget about funnels. And what I mean by that is that it'll be much more viable to you and your agency is to just be relevant to the right people, okay? We can build funnels later down the line, we can build systems later down the line, but for now, the most important thing is to just be relevant to the right people, to offer the right service to the right people and to have an offer that will benefit the right people. Once you have your offer nailed down and once you know how to get results for those people and once you have a portfolio of results that you can present to them, that is when you start building out your funnels and start building out your website and your systems and so on and so forth. And the last but most certainly not least is once you've figured out what works, double down on that. Rather than trying to go wide, actually go deep. So once you've figured out how to get results with Facebook ads, for example, for your niche, Rather than trying to offer content creation, email marketing, copywriting, etc., just duplicate what works. So find more clients that are in the same niche, same price bracket, have the same average order value, same store conversion rate, and just implement what has already worked. You'll notice it'll be much easier for you because all you're doing is basically copying and pasting uh, what has worked for the previous clients, and you'll notice that your workload will also decrease and you'll be able to ask much more for that one particular offer or service. Same goes for us, we only offer Facebook ads to Shopify stores doing around 30K a month uh, you know, in the US, meal prep and meal delivery of course, and by doing that, we are able to charge a higher retainer than we used to. We're able to implement back-end deals because we know how to get results for those clients. And in terms of workload, I work two, three hours a day on the accounts. I'm managing 21 accounts myself right now. And you know, from that point onwards, I'm basically done with my job and my agency generates around 30 to 35K a month. And actually last month, July, was our first 40K month. So it's not actually that hard, it's not actually that difficult, and the workload isn't actually that much. And the reason for that is because we don't offer hundreds of different services to hundreds of different clients. We've gone deep on that one service and that one offer. So anyway, those are my 10 tactics to get up from zero to 10K extremely quickly. Of course, quickly is subjective. You know, I'm not saying that it will happen overnight. You will need to put in the work. But by implementing these tips and tactics, I do think that you'll be getting there much quicker than if you were not to implement those tactics. That is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next video.